Okay, the um, kids woke us up today after about three hours of sleep, so I thought I would make this video before I um, pass out from fatigue. Um, many of you have asked me to give readings from my book about Ishikawa Jun, which is nearing completion at the moment. The book is called Writing Beyond Realism, Ishikawa Jun and the Case Against Modern Literature, a critical study of Ishikawa's early fiction and essays with translations. Um, unfortunately, I can't give a uh, reading from the uh, main section of the book, but I can uh, read from the little blurb descriptions that precede each of the uh, translations. Okay, So the last 150 or yeah, 140 or so pages of the book are translations of the work works that are discussed in the main section of the book. Okay, So I'm going to read the blurbs from these works. From these descriptions, rather. Okay, they're little short descriptions that uh, introduce each of the translations. Okay, so the translations begin on page 283 of the book, as it is right now. Um, seven early works by Ishikawa Jun. First, we have the first section is fiction. Okay, so I, I translated three works of fiction that were uh, published between 1935 and 38. The first is The Fair One, or Kajin, originally published in May 1935. The second one is The Wild Cherry Tree, Yamazakura, uh, originally published in January 1936. The third is Song of Mars, originally published in January of 38. Okay? And then the second section of the translations is uh, Literary Criticism. Four works of literary criticism published between 1940 and 1943, so in, at the height of the war. Um, the works are Form and Content in Writing, Okay, Bunshō no Keishiki to Nayo, originally published in May 1940. What constitutes a Tampen Shōsetsu? Tampen Shōsetsu no Kōsei, first published in March 1940. Prayer, Norito, and Prose, first published in 1942, of May of 1942. And the original title is Kito to Norito to Sanbun. And finally, uh, probably the most important uh, essay of criticism by Ishikawa Jun, Edojin no Hassoho Nitsuite, On the Thought Patterns of the People of Edo, uh, published in March 1943. Okay, so here are the blurbs to those, what is it, seven works, okay? The Fair One, Kajin. Kajin was first published in May 1935 issue of the major literary journal Sakuhin. Although Ishikawa had already published numerous fictional etudes, or shūsaku, translations of French literature, and essays of literary criticism, it is this work that has long been re regarded by Japanese critics as marking his debut as a writer. The work was immediately praised by the prominent novelist Makino Shinichi, whose favorable review put Ishikawa on the radar of Japan's literary establishment, or Bundang. Two years later, Ishikawa would win the fourth annual Akutagawa Prize for his first full-length novel, Fugen, or The Bodhisattva, 1936. As I argue in Chapter 3 of this book, Kajin is both an i-novel and an i-novel parody that undermines the basic tenets of autobiographical realism through the conspicuous use of four types of literary mediation, which I call deep, surface, reflexive, and figural mediation. Its first-person narrator, a kind of mitate or parody of eccentric neo-Daoist poets of Chinese antiquity, such as Luan Zhi, who lived in the 3rd century, the narrator longs to escape the confines of his insular wor world and submerge himself into something external, and the story he re relates is about his various unsuccessful attempts to accomplish this. Despite his repeated attempts to locate this unspecified, obscure, and elusive object, represented by the work's central metaphor, the fair one, or kajin, in Chinese, jia deng, he is con consistently rebuffed, humiliated, and eventually reduced to a wild beast, ikko no yajiu. The story ends with him... The story ends with him stuck within the confines of self and completely in the grip of his possessor, quote-unquote, the Greek demigod Pan. The word introduced the narrative structure that would characterize Ishikawa's early fiction. 
an unnamed first-person narrator who is a struggling artist of some metier, metier, aspires to create an alternative world through his, but is prevented from doing so by some interloping force beyond his control. This force, then, becomes the main focus of the narrator's attention and, by extension, the main subject of the work. Here, the disruptive force takes the form of the narrator's acute self-consciousness, or jiiski, an irrepressible sexual drive represented by the demigod Pan. Ironically, it is precisely his inability to overcome Pan, Pan that enables him to write the work we are reading. Okay, now here's the blurb uh, to my translation of The Wild Cherry Tree. Yamazakura was first published on January 1st, 1936 in the literary journal Bunge Handong. The work has been widely praised by Japanese critics. In chapter 4 of this book, I argue that the work constitutes a qualified instance of uh, Zvetan Todorov's famous genre of the fantastic, challenging the tenets and conventions of realism through the discourse of fantasy. Like Kajin, or The Fair One, this work, this work features a first-person artist narrator, in this case, a struggling painter, who is possessed by some force beyond his control. But whereas the narrator of Kajin is ostensibly possessed by an eternal external entity, the Greek god Pan, the narrator here is haunted by a repressed memory, namely of his ill-fated affair with a woman called Kyoko 12 years ago. From the opening lines, he seems to be hurtling inexorably towards some preordained destination, which we soon learn is the Spanish-style villa on the outskirts of Tokyo, where Kyoko now lives with her husband, Zensaku. There, the narrator will reenact his unresolved trauma, make a surprising discovery, and attempt to retrieve the lost object of his desire. Whether the events that occur after his encounter with the wild cherry tree are a hallucination or an actual experience is left ambiguous. As with all of Ishikawa's early fiction, readers will want to pay close attention to how the four types of literary mediation, deep, surface, reflexive, and figural, function in the story. Okay, here is the blurb to the third uh, translation, uh, uh, the, th the work of fiction, The Song of Mars. Mars no Uta first appeared in the January 1938 issue of the major literary journal Bungakukai, six months after the outbreak of the Second Sino-Japanese War, uh, which began in July 1937 and lasted until September 1945. The story was promptly banned by government censors for its per perceived unpatriotic tone. Although often described as an anti-war work, the piece is more self-flagellation than protest an admission of impotence in a season of peak nationalism, imperialist war, and head-in-sand denialism. The Mars of the title refers, of course, to the god of war in Roman mythology. The fictional Song of Mars is based on several actual, actual military songs popular in the late 1930s. Its ubiquitous, menacing refrain seems to follow the narrator wherever he goes, serving as a kind of metonym for the war itself. The increasingly dangerous behavior of the work's central female, female character, Fuyuko, can be read as an allegory for Imperial Japan's frenzied drive to push its boundaries ever further, and her ultimate fate, a prescient vision of Japan's catastrophic defeat in 1945. Readers will note that this work employs the familiar narrative structure that characterizes Ishikawa's early fiction, which I described in the introduction to The Fair One. Or Kajin. Here, the interloping force that prevents the narrator from creating an alternative world through his art takes the form of the world historical event, the Second Sino Japanese War. The Sanskrit word prajna, or chie in Japanese, is a Buddhist term that means true discernment or wisdom in action. Okay, now on to uh, Ishikawa Jun's literary criticism, literary uh, essays written um, during the war. Okay, the first is Form and Content in Writing. So here is the blurb description to my translation of that essay. Bunshou no keishiki no to naiyo. 
first appeared in the May 1940 issue of the journal Gendai Bunshou Kouza, and was later included in Bungak Taigai, in A General Approach to Literature. Okay, that's his uh, book that includes, his, fu- his full monograph that includes uh, many of the essays that he wor- wrote during the war. The book was published in 1940. As I explained in Chapter 5 of this book, the essay is an incisive theory of writing, or bunsho, that marks another salvo in Ishikawa's broader project of the period, his penetrating critique of modern Japanese literature, and its bedrock notion of shajitsugi. Okay, shajitsugi means, is the uh, word for realism, basically. His theory is put forth in three modes. A descriptive theory of writing in general, a prescriptive theory of literary prose, or what I sometimes call écriture, and a theory of aesthetic value. The first section outlines the four general conditions of all writing, its materiality, autonomy from speech, rootedness in history and culture, and public orientation. The second section offers a roadmap for arriving at his ideal for a rarefied, purified prose by delineating the four factors that contaminate or corrupt it namely conflation with speech, reliance on stylized conventions, or kata, overdevelopment of technique, and poetic residue. Both sections are in part a critique of the modern vernacular style of writing called genbun ichi, which Ishika vehemently rejects. The last section offers his perspective on a decades-old dispute about whether a work's value resides in its form, or keishiki, style or form, or in its content, naiyo. Although Ishka does not cite any of the key literary debates over literary value that took place in the 1920s and 30s, this last section is clearly a response to the issues raised in debates such as the so-called content value debate, or Nayo te kikachi don so, that took place in 1922 between Kikuchi Khan and Satomi Tong. Ishikawa tries to overcome the long-standing dichotomy between form and content, or style and content, by fusing them into a single category, which he calls unconscious content, or ishiki sare zaru naiyo. It is through this style-derived content, he argues, that an authentic literary text can exceed the sum of its representational content and become something that is both representational and self-reflexive, heteronomous and autonomous. Unlike the conscious content of a work, unconscious content arises spontaneously from the words themselves. For Ishka, it is in this middle space between style and content that the beauty of a literary text resides. Readers will note that the term keishiki, usually translated as form, is translated here as both form and style, since it was often used by writers and critics of the period to signify literary style. For those interested in reading Ishikawa's literary criticism in the original Japanese, I recommend the recent Ishikawa Jun Hyoron Sen, or a selection of Ishikawa Jun's literary criticism, uh, published in 2007 by Chikuma Shobo, which includes these four essays. Okay, here is the blurb for the next essay What constitutes a Tampen Shosetsu? Tampen Shosetsu no Kosei is Ishikawa's most often cited essay of literary criticism. It first appeared in March 1940 in issue 3 of Gendai Bunshou Koza and was later included in Bungak Taigai, the full monograph that was published in 1940. 42, actually. Um, as I argue in chapter 6, the essay, despite its title and opening vow, is an implicit theory of the Shousetsu. Often translated as novel, Shosetsu is better described as a piece of fictional narrative. Tampen Shosetsu, a modern neologism usually translated as short story, is used rather idiosyncratically by Ishika to denote most works of Japan- modern Japanese fiction. Ishika sees this umbrella category as consisting of two main types, which he calls the conte and the nouvelle. Conte, the French word for short tales or stories, is used by Ishikawa to den- denote what are generally called tampen, such as those by Japan's most renowned conteur, Aktaga Ryunosuke. Novel, a prose genre that has its roots in the medieval Breton, Le, and 
fableau is used by Ishka to denote most so-called modern shōsetsu, which he regards as botched or inauthentic shōsetsu. Crucially, Ishka regards both Kant and Nouvelle as antithetical to his notion of the true shōsetsu, which lies outside the genealogy of literature or bungaku and art geijutsu, defies direct definition and theorization, and is extremely rare. Ishikawa's philosophy of shōsetsu also draws from André Gide, whose modernist novels, or récits, récits, as Gide preferred to call them, he translated before his official literary debut. Okay, two more essays to go. Here's the blurb for Prayer, Norito, and Prose. Kito to Norito to Sanbun was first published in the May 1942 issue of Gendai Bungaku, nearly five years after the publication of the Song of Mars. The war was now raging on two fronts, China and Southeast Asia. The anti-war to- tone that marked that earlier work is conspicuously absent here. The essay, told in a kind of meandering documentary style, explores various subjects loosely connected by the three terms of the title, Christian prayers, Shinto Norito, or ritual chants, and Japanese prose. The subjects include French poet and First World, First World War casualty Charles Peggy, Gothic writer Izumi Kyoka, mimetic notions of writing based on the author's everyday life diagram, or Seikatsu Zuke, and psychological diagram, Shinri Zuke, categories of interiority and the literary genres they spawned, naturalism's failure to go beyond the so-called life-based hypothesis, Nagai Kafu's importance as political and social critic, and his controversial work House for a Mistress, in, published in 1912, as the so-called, as the, quote, genesis of the modern Japanese shōsetsu, the Kojiki, Japan's oldest chronicle, and the notions of prayer and the divine in Shinto, Japan's native religion. While there is much to admire in the essay, Ishikawa's description of Shinto as a timeless, unchanging force that pervades all aspects of Japanese culture and society now and forever is problematic. In the modern period, Shinto is recast as state Shinto, or Kokka Shinto, a quasi-religious imperial ideology used to bolster the state. By extolling state Shinto in this way, and by degrading foreign religions, Christianity and Buddhism, Ishka opens himself up to the charge that he is echoing the nationalistic myths of his day. Readers will note that the second section of the essay is largely a critique of the mimetic conception of literature, that primary target of Ishka's early works. The essay was anthologized in Volume 7 of Kindai Bunga Kyorong Taike, or Compendium of Modern Literary Criticism, published in 1972. And lastly, here is the blurb to uh, arguably the most important essay of literary criticism that Ishka wrote on the thought patterns of the people of Edo. Edo Jin no Hassoho Nitsite was first published at the height of the Second World War in the March 1943 issue of the journal Shiso. Now widely considered a classic of modern Japanese literary criticism, the essay was recently included in the second volume of Chiba Shunji's and Tsubouchi Yuzo's influential anthology of literary criticism, Nihon Kindai Bunga Kyoron Sen, Showa Hen, an anthology of modern Japanese literary criticism, Showa period 2004. As I argue in chapter 7 of this book, the essay, despite its title and explicit subject, is more than an exquisite, exquisite treatise on the haikai literature of the Edo period as critic Noguchi Takehiko described it. More importantly, it is an incisive, if oblique, attack on what Ishka regarded as the founding notion and dominant paradigm of modern Japanese literature, Shajitsu Shugi. While the essay's explicit subject is the dominant thought patterns, or Hassoho, or literary hermeneutic paradigm, of the Edo period, its implicit subject is the dominant thought patterns or literary hermeneutic paradigm of modernity. By invoking the largely forgotten literary techniques of the Edo period, namely mitate, analog parody, zokka, popularization, yatsushi, 
lowly disguise, honkadori, elusive variation in native waka poems, and honshidori, elusive variation in Sinitic poems, which he calls the five conversion devices, tenka no sosa, of haikai transformation, haikai ka. Ishikawa sought to show his readers that alternatives to me- mimetic re- realism, or shajitsugi, existed in the past and could still be marshaled in the creation of new modes of writing. Although Ishikawa does not idealize or romanticize the Edo period as many of his contemporaries did, he does depict its literary culture in thoroughly positive terms, implicitly contrasting it with a disenchanted modern world that has lost the ability to see, read, and understand the world symbolically or analogically. As we read the essay, we shall keep in mind that his description of this past tradition is in fact a coded critique of the present. Okay. That is all I will give you for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, which featured cameos from my two of my three kids in the beginning of the video. That is all for now. Bye-bye.